Hello. In this video, we're going to look at comparing two population means. So we're looking at a numerical trait, and that numerical trait across two populations. Formally, that's called a two-sample t-interval if you're calculating a confidence interval, and a two-sample t-test if you're calculating a hypothesis test. And we are assuming here independent populations, so there's no matched pairing like before and after tests or something like that. Alright, in this example, researchers want to determine whether carpeted rooms contain more bacteria than uncarpeted rooms. So to determine the amount of bacteria in a room, researchers pump air from a room over a petri dish at the rate of 1 cubic foot per minute for 11 carpeted rooms and 8 uncarpeted rooms. Colonies of bacteria are allowed to form in the 19 petri dishes, and the results are presented in the table below. The units are measured in bacteria per cubic foot. Alright, so first let's go ahead and check conditions. So what we have here then, uh, we can assume for the independent groups assumption that the number of bacteria in the different types of flooring should be independent. So that would, is okay. And then the random sampling. Now for representative sample, what we want to do is go ahead and put um, all the values from the carpeted rooms into one list all the values from the uncarpeted rooms in another list and go ahead and do either a histogram, a normal probability plot, or a box plot and just look to see that it's you know, relatively normal. Again, the big idea here is that for the box plot that there are no, no outliers. You know, and the histograms, they're not going to look perfect at all, but as long as it doesn't look really bad. So let me just remind you how to do that. So here, if we look at our calculator, I've already got everything loaded up. So what I'm going to do is just go to a dummy list and just put in a few numbers just to remind you. So let's say I went into stats, and I want to choose, let's see here, let's let this get into focus, edit, which is already, your cursor is already on edit. So press enter. Now I've already got everything listed in. In list one, I've got carpeted. In list two, I have uncarpeted. So first of all, let's say I had some stuff that I didn't want all right, in, list, in a list. So to clear the list, you go up to the name of the list, you press clear, and then enter. And that'll clear your list. And then you start putting in values like 15, 22, whatever your values are, right? Okay. So that's just a real quick review, just to kind of remind you. Go ahead and pause the video and enter put those values in here. Enter these values into two separate lists, probably L1 and L2. Alright, so pause the video, go ahead and do that. And now, assuming you've done that, this is what you'd see on your screen. Now we're going to go to stat plots. We're going to go second, y equals, and here I just, you should have all your plots off or just one of them on. I have one of them on. I'm going to go into that menu. And what I want to do here is, let's say we're going to do the histogram. Then I'm going to come down to type. Of course, select on to turn on your plot. Then I'm going to go to the histogram. Press enter. And then over here, I want to put in L1. If you don't have L1, what you want to do is press second. And then one, and you can see L1 is on is the second function of the numeric button one. All right, so from here, I like to press zoom nine, which is zoom stat. And often I won't get a scale I particularly like. Um, so let's just take a look at the window. And that's actually not bad. Um, it looks like it's going from 12 to 17. Um, so that's not too bad. So let's go back and see, see that. Let's go back to graph. When we press trace, it looks like there's one value between 12 and 13 and so on and so forth. So you can see that you go 1, 3, 3, 2, 2. So I've went ahead and re represented that so you could see that. And that's a nice histogram. So that's pretty good. And then if you wanted to double check, you could double check the box plot. So to do that, you'd go second y equals, go back into your plots, come down to your type. You already have L1, so all you have to do is go from histogram to box modified box plot. That one will show you with the little two dots there. That'll show you if there's any outliers. So select that, and then press zoom 9. 
and that looks beautiful. So no outliers, quite symmetric. You can press trace and just kind of see what you have. You have 12, 13, 14, right? See right here. So I've, went, I've gone ahead and represented that so you can see that. So those look very nice, right? You're going to do the same thing for uncarpeted. So I'm going to go to second y equals, right? Go into my plots. The only thing here is I'm going to go ahead and select histogram and then I'm going to put L2, which is second 2, right? Now I press zoom 9. Again, I can't tell what scale I've got, so I press window to see what did the calculator choose, and it decided to go from 5 to 16.25, which I think I would rather go from at least 5 to 17, just to make that round. And then I probably might want to go by 2, okay? Because that's easier for a human to read, right, instead of those decimals. Now press graph, though, because you already forced your entries. So when you do that, now it looks like this got cut off, so let me increase my y max from 2 to maybe 4. Let's just see. Press graph again. There it is. That looks good. Now if I press trace, I get in this first column I have one value between, what, 5 and just under 7. Two values between 7 and just under 9, and so on and so forth. So that's what I've represented here. Okay. And now let's take a look at the box plot for that, just to, just to double check that there are no outliers. So we come down here, take the choose the modified box plot, and you've already got L2, so now zoom 9, and that looks beautiful. You can trace that, and you see here it starts at 5, 7.5, 9.5. These don't matter. This is a five number summary I'm just showing you. But actually the, the box plot has no outliers. It looks very nice and symmetric. So beautiful. Okay. So there we go. We can see that for our representative sample, since we have small sample sizes, meaning sample sizes less than 30, the central limit theorem does not apply. So we have to check to make sure that our samples are relatively normal. We're a little bit lenient on it, but these are nice. These are very nice. No outliers. Everything looks pretty good. So then the 10% rule, we have the sample size for the carpeted is 11. The sample size for uncarpeted is 8. And that's surely less than 10% of all carpeted and uncarpeted rooms, respectively. And then independent, uh, the number of bacteria in one room, be it carpeted or uncarpeted, won't affect you know, the number of bacteria in another room, carpeted or uncarpeted. As long as the air systems are separate, because what they said is they pumped air in. Right? They said they pumped, let's see here, air from a room over a petri dish right, at a certain rate. So as long as the air conditioning systems are separate, one room should not affect the other. And again, with randomization, that should be done well. That's not a problem. All right, so we've met conditions. Now we're off to actually finding a 98% confidence interval for the difference in the average number of bacteria in carpeted rooms and the average number of bacteria in uncarpeted rooms. All right, so we've already checked conditions. Now, so what we want to do is let the calculator do this for us. We just have to tell it how to do that. So we go to stat, and remember we go to tests, and we want to start with the two sample T interval, right? Two sample T interval, and here we want to pick data. So press enter, and then you would put in L1 and L2 if that were not there. Frequency is one, so that's not a problem. And we want a 98% confidence level. None of this is ever pooled. We don't know the variances, and we definitely don't know that they're the same. Press calculate. There it is. 1.7 to 7.73, right? So what we're saying then is, let's go ahead and write that down. We got a confidence interval 1.7 to 7.7318. Okay. So again, here this went from a positive number to a positive number, and we want to know is zero in the interval. Well, no, we went from a positive number to a positive number. So we're going to be saying, with a 98% confidence, 
population one. Now we have to figure out which one has a higher number of bacteria per cubic foot in the room. So let's see, how did we set that up? Well, we did L1. You can hear my dog drinking in the background. <laughs> she drinks a lot of water. We did uh, L1, X1, and then X2. So we really did, if you look back at your stats, carpeted and then uncarpeted, right? So L1 was carpeted. Boy, that's not in focus. Mm, come on, focus. There we go. So we did Y bar carpeted minus Y bar uncarpeted, and we got all positive values, which means that carpeted rooms have more bacteria. So we know that mu carpeted is greater than mu uncarpeted, right? So now what we want to say then is, with a 98% confidence, Carpeted rooms average between, and then give your values, you know, 1.7 to 7.7, for example, uh, more bacteria per cubic foot than uncarpeted rooms. Or you could say with a 98% confidence, uncarpeted rooms average between, and then the two values, fewer of bacteria per cubic foot than carpeted rooms, right? So, let's go ahead and just write that sentence with a 98% confidence. Carpeted rooms average between, and we can put here 1.7 to, let's say, 7.7 .7 bacteria per cubic foot Average between this and this more, sorry, more bacteria per cubic foot than uncarpeted rooms. All right. So there's our sentence. Ninety-eight percent confidence. Carpeted rooms average between one point seven to seven point seven more bacteria per cubic foot than uncarpeted rooms. All right. So that's our confidence interval. Now for our hypothesis test, we're going to test the claim that there's no difference, no difference in the average amount of bacteria in carpeted versus uncarpeted rooms using a 5% significance level. So remember, no difference means your alternative is a not equal to, right? And then here we're using regular alpha level. All right, so to test that, we're going to go back to your calculator. We're going to go to stat. And we're going to go to tests. Remember here we're doing a two sample t test. Right? Two sample t test. We're using data coming from L1, L2. And notice that the order in which I put this, L1 comes first, then L2. L1 was carpeted rooms, L2 was uncarpeted rooms. All right? So then this comes here. We're going to choose the not equal to not pooled, and then we're going to say calculate. So what's important here is the p-value. Here we get a point oh oh one six five, etc, etc, etc. So let's write that down. So the p-value equals point oh oh one six five six nine, let's say. So because the p-value is less than alpha, right? Because here, if I move the decimal over two, right? Then what I have is 0.1, let's say 7%, is less than 5%, okay? And therefore, we reject the null. And then you can say there is strong evidence that the average number of bacteria per cubic foot in carpeted rooms is different from So we had to use different from because that's what they asked us to do, right? It's different from um, the average number of 
of bacteria per cubic foot in uncarpeted rooms. Okay. Now, so what's happening is if you go back, what we tested was mu uh, c equals mu u, right? Versus mu c not equal to mu u. And again, what this translates to is the average number of bacteria per cubic foot in carpeted rooms is different from the average number of uh, the average number of bacteria per cubic foot in uncarpeted rooms. And so essentially, you're just putting that in here. Strong evidence: the average number of bacteria per cubic foot in carpeted rooms is different from the average number of bacteria per cubic foot in uncarpeted rooms. Now, if for some reason you had tested, let's say, greater than, because of the way you put it in the calculator, you put car cal carpeted first and then uncarpeted, then you would know that carpeted would be greater than uncarpeted, if that's how you set it up. So the order in which you put it in the calculator, um, and then what you select here, is going to tell you how to write your sentence. Okay? And thanks so much for listening.